He scored in double figures. Devon Maxwell, Justin Black, they're gonna go one on one. Take a look at your starting lineups. First for the visiting Pirates. You heard about Maxwell just now. He's joined by Durant Powers, Brian Darden, Keyron Brown. And look out for number 30, Javon Presley. He sat out the first semester because of transfer rules finals in his seven years of coaching the Bears. Two outstanding coaches. They've both been in the NCAAs. They're leaders in their institutions. This should be an interesting ball game. Your officials are Emmanuel Upton, Duke Getzel, and Dwayne Gladen. And the Morgan State Bears control the opening tip in their white home uniforms. Hampton will start out in some matchup man to man. They'll, they'll sag, they'll play some zone. But Buck Jonas says we've got to be aggressive in whatever we do, man or zone. Here's Black with the ball, gives it up. First jump shot of the game is short. Cedric Blossom with the first field goal attempt. Here come the Pirates. Hampton, winners of their last three and four and oh in the MIAC on the road. Impressive to start the season. They lock in, they focus, they do a great job. Inside goes out of bounds. It'll stay Hampton basketball with 15 on the shot clock. Cedric Blossom goes about 6'6", six, six, is a very physical player, will go to the glass, has that presence, and has been able to kind of eliminate some of that inside game so that everybody doesn't have to necessarily run away from Ian Childs. Childs had a really big season as a senior. Look at Childs guarding the baseline. Almost took it away from Kieran Brown as he tried to inbounds it. An imposing Seven presence to say two. the least. Ooh. Right off and off the leg. Childs, a senior out of Cliffside Park, New Jersey. They call him Big Slu. For good reason. Ten on the shot clock for Hampton. First jumper of the game, a two pointer. That's Durant Powers who opens the score. Powers averages about 12 points a basketball game, was the MIAC rookie of the year last year. Hasn't had a bad season, hasn't had to score as much, and certainly seen parts of his game develop. There's Bozeman along the baseline, and we have our first turnover. An unforced error by Morgan State. They average just under 12 turnovers a game. This is a team that's only had five games over 15 turnovers. They don't turn the basketball over very much. Young guns. Only two seniors on his team for Hampton and the middle approach. You said they're 4-0 on the road. They focus, they lock in, they've got to play solid basketball. And we've got an offensive foul on Hampton. That'll go on Keyron Brown, the sophomore of Savannah, Georgia. One of the youngest teams in all of college basketball. 13 players in this team are underclassmen. Now, if you Morgan State, it's about attack, attack, attack. And then ball value, as you said, this is a team that doesn't turn the ball over a lot. They've got to make plays like Ooh, that. Justin Black took it strong to the hole and got fouled for his trouble. Well, you saw both of those emphases there. Attack, attack, attack. Justin Black goes down the floor. Watch this. Just great athleticism. Is going to finish in the top 20 in points and assist here at Morgan State. And then they think about they've got to be able to do value the basketball, go to the free throw, and make their free throws tonight. Yeah, here's one thing that Todd Bozeman's club does not do very well. It's shoot from the free throw line. As a team, 59.4% and Justin Black right around there at 56%. And we talked last week ad nauseum about Savannah State having a poor free throw shooting team. We found a team that shoots worse than they do at the free throw line. In fact, both of these teams shoot just bare under 65 to 65 to 59. There's a steal and a turnover, and Black can't convert it with the left hand at the other end. Hampton gets it back, Brown controls. Brown, coast to coast, no good. Maxwell picks it up, gets the bump and the bucket. Devon Maxwell, who you talked about in our one-on-one, -on -one, has his first points of the what game. What I like about Maxwell, he's got great hands, drives this ball down the floor, Brown does. Watch Maxwell come out from the weak side, get the contact, and go up and score. The sixth best rebounder in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the number one shot blocker in the MAAC, Devon Maxwell. Yeah, he had 20 points, 12 boards, and three blocks the last time these two teams played. He completes the three-point play, and it's an early 5-1 Hampton lead. And Hampton, after the made free throw, and a moment ago after that basket, show a little bit of 2-2-1 or some type of matchup man pressure, just trying to slow Morgan State down a bit. 
There's Anthony Hubbard with the ball, number 11 in white. Gives it up to Blossom. Good matchup here, Darden versus Jet Black. Wow! wow. Justin Black showing the athleticism along the baseline. And Darden's going to have to do a better job of keeping the basketball away from him and then cutting off the baseline. Black, too explosive at 6'2". That's a nice finish. They handle the pressure that time, and Powers controls from the point. Ten on the shot clock. Six to shoot. Darden. A little too much dribbling. Two on the shot clock. Maxwell forces it up and knocks it down. And he's not known as a three-point shooter. But comes in with the clock going down and knocks it down. You're being kind, Stan. He was two for 14 from three this entire season. That's just his third triple. His Giles blocked by Maxwell. And Hampton comes away with it. Hampton getting off to a very good start offensively as well as defensively. Powers, the runner, and he got fouled. Great energy early on from Hampton. Well, you go inside, you know you've got an eraser, but you can't erase this. Just a nice stop there. No one comes up and cuts off the baseline a little too slow as Jervon Presley. He doesn't do a good job of it. Black makes him pay. So here's Durant Powers, best free throw shooter on the team at 86%. And he misses the first. Powers averaged about 12 points a game last year and, and looked to be a little more offensive. He's had similar numbers this season, except he's got a little more offensive weapons right now. Still having a great season. His numbers are very similar. 11 and a half points, 86% free throws line, and one of the top assist guys in the MEAC, number three. Yeah, and talking to Buck Joyner earlier today, he calls him the calming factor on this Pirates team. He's the engine that runs this team. Here's Black. Gives it off. Blossom lost it. And Morgan State controls. Here's Bozeman for three. Yes! A rare sight for Morgan State Bears basketball fans. A three-pointer from the Morgan State Club. They average just 27% from the three-point range. Good job keeping that ball alive. Second chance opportunities. Blake Bozeman, feet set, knocks it in. But you're not going to find a better three-point shooter in the country Brian than the young Darden. guy, Brian Dark. He's 42nd of the year. So they match triples. And it's 12-6, Hampton. And I like the fact that the guys are letting them kind of play a little bit inside. Charles. Powers. Childs off the mark. Nice follow by Anthony Hubbard, his first two of the game. Hubbard's one of those unsung hero guys. There's Brown, jump stop in the paint. Ooh, Maxwell faked him out, but drew the offensive foul instead. Anywhere. That's why he went to Jerry. Well, Hampton and Morgan State met about two weeks ago, Stan. Hampton's home floor, and it was Morgan State who came away with the win, 80 to 71. Over 5,000 Hampton fans in attendance. A raucous crowd, but Morgan State, the important win on the road. Here's Ian Childs. He's 0 for 2 from the field in the early going. Great offensive rebound and put back by Anthony Hubbard. We talked just a moment ago about Hubbard being that unsung hero. A guy at 6'5 that can find his way to the basketball. A little double team at the last there on Childs. And watch, no one boxes out number 11, Hubbard. He can put the ball on the floor. He can go after it and get it. Goes in there. Has the possibility of a three-point play. You get so much attention with the big guy, Childs, and with Black. Hubbard kind of sneaks in the cracks. If he plays well, Morgan usually plays well. Amazing to think that Anthony Hubbard didn't even play basketball in high school. Took it up in junior college. Had a half of a season at the University of Iowa, then transferred to Frederick Community College here in this area, and has gotten better and better. You talk to Todd Bozeman, he says, man, you haven't even scratched the surface with this kid. He's got so much ability to him. That's an unforced error by Powers. Another Hampton turnover. And Morgan State has a chance to take their first lead of the game with a bucket. Unforced turnover there. Just, just I don't know, you just got to give a better angle for that pass to the post. 
Three Hampton turnovers in the first five and a half minutes of the game. Here's Dante Pretlow who's checked in. Black, way off the mark from three-point range. Number 24, Ramon Mercado has checked in for Hampton. As has number 23, Dwight Meikle. And for Morgan State, number 44, Shaquille Duncan has checked in, along with Tyre Heath. An up and down game betters for Mercado. He's a very streaky shooter. And a lot of times you're going to see Mercado in the ball game along with Darden. Very good player, guys. In fact, they have it now. So look for a lot of wing shots. Try to get the play open. Look for cutters. Morgan's got to do a very good job knowing where shooters are. Presley hands it off to Breon Key, who's checked in for Buck Jordan. Three-pointer by Meikle, no good. And the rebound skied and grabbed by Anthony Hubbard. Nice look ahead. And Shaq Duncan has his first two of the game. A 7-0 Morgan State run has given them their first lead of the game with 13.54 to go. And we talk about the value of Hubbard. Hubbard gets the rebound, looks ahead. Duncan does a nice job running the floor. A nice little floater, catch, and score. Great job in transition. I think there are something like eight or nine Shaquille's playing Division One basketball right now. And if, you, <laughs> if you look at your calendar and you go back to when they were born, you understand why. So far, hot shooting from both teams. Here's Mercado, left-hand jumper, good. That's a three. A nice look out of the half. Of the set. Had four in a game against Coppin the other day. A jump shot off, and Merkel comes away with the rebound. Up and down pace, you're going to look for those perimeter shooters. Here's Key, guarded by Fretwell. Close range, no good, but the follow. And Emmanuel Okoroba will go to the line and shoot. And Okoroba's a kid that started last year and started many of the games earlier this season. And then with the emergence of Javon Presley's second semester, has come in and been the first big off the bench in most cases. A very physical guy. Not a great score, but can give you those intangibles. A block shot, a block out, a loose rebound. He can do those things, Okoroba. And had his career high, 18 points, the last time these two teams played. A Super Tuesday doubleheader is on ESPNU, first at 7. An SEC battle when Ole Miss takes on Julius Randle in the number 18 Wildcats. Then at 9, the ACC takes the court when Wake Forest takes on Jabari Parker and the number 11 Blue Devils. Mississippi, Kentucky, Wake Forest, Duke. The action tips at 7 on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. Miko, the offensive board, and the putback. Some nice job of just being patient. Get in the post, notice some going to be his contact, just take your time, he's scoring. Jumping in and out, offensive board again by Hubbard. And Hubbard will go to the line and shoot two. Talked about Duke there, how do you think they're going to respond on short rest after that epic Syracuse battle Saturday? Games at Cameron, lost a game, Wake Forest is the opponent, Demon Deacons be ready. I'll let that stand. That'll be, a, <laughs> okay. that'll be an angry Blue Devils team. What a classic game Saturday, huh? Syracuse and Duke. Two teams will play again in a couple of weeks in Cameron. Not very often a game that receives that much hype for that long lives up to its billing, but that one did. Exactly. It really did. Hubbard missed the first. He has three double-doubles this season. The senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. There's one for two from the line. He has six. And Hampton's up four, 12.50 to go. Both of these teams still kind of feeling themselves out. A couple of guys have stepped up and made plays. Hubbard done a nice job for more to stay. They go inside, working along the baseline, and they're going to get Childs with the, re with the foul. I was just about to say that Morgan's done a really nice job in making sure Childs doesn't pick up the cheap foul. And before I could say it, just doesn't do a good job quickly enough closing off the baseline. That's an easy call to block, especially right in front of the officials. 
One of the things that's been a concern for Morgan State this year is, is how to officiate the length and size of Ian Childs at seven feet tall. Number 11, Anthony Hubbard has gone to the bench for Todd Bozeman. We'll see who brings the energy with him gone. Blocked by Childs. Nice look underneath. Here's Mikkel. No look basket. Count it. <laughs> That's one way to beat a seven foot two guy. And you saw immediately after picking up that foul, the Childs, they tried to go right at him that time with Okoroba. That foul is going to go on number two, Breon Key. Hampton's done a really nice job of pounding the glass. Shots blocked by Childs, keeps it alive. And watch this. Look, man, no look. Over the shoulder, count the basket. Nothing extra for style points, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. Two-possession game, counting down to 12 minutes to go in the first half. Both of these teams right near the top of the MEAC standings. And they expected to grind them out. That's what I want to see. Going to the post, guy. See the double team? Charles has got to catch the ball and look to face up or either skip pass. He'll have someone open. Better. He'll defend. He doesn't mind who he guards. It can be a big or a little. can put you on the floor. You really like the development of the game of Anthony Hubbard. Six points for Hubbard. Two for two from the field, two for two, or two for three from the free throw line. Here's Childs at the line shooting one and one. And the big left hander misses it. Baseline. Childs all over him, takes the ball away. Nice look inside from Bozeman. Bretlow takes it back out. Ten on the shot clock for the Bears. Got to recognize clock drive if you got something. And we've got a whistle. Don't miss Wednesday Night Hoops doubleheader on ESPNU at 7. The 21st ranked Sooners take on the Mountaineers. Then at 9, conference play continues as Russ Smith and the number 14 Cardinals take on the Cougars in the American Conference. A Wednesday Night Hoops doubleheader on ESPNU. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. And despite their most recent win Saturday, the Cardinals dropped two spots to 14th in the polls because of that tough loss at home to Cincinnati earlier in the week. And Jonah Jr. showed a lot of confidence keeping key in the basketball game as opposed to the primary ball handling powers. Here's Lawrence Cooks. He draws the foul, and the redshirt freshman will go to the line and shoot two. So you've got a lineup that's very young on the floor right now with Key on the floor along with Cooks. Cooks not known as a big scorer. And Meikle, the guys that we kind of have been the highlight players for this Hampton basketball team, Powers, Darden, who makes threes, and, of course, Maxwell are all on the bench right now. Keyron Brown also with the two fouls. Cooks out of Charlotte, North Carolina, knocks down the first. He averages 5.1 points a game, and Buck Joyner said he's an X-factor, mostly because he's a freshman, so you never know quite what you're going to get from the youngsters. Now, this whole team is an X-factor, if you ask me. They've got a whole lot of young players, and what he says is that, you know, it's, it's kind of thing. They've got some veterans, a lot of those veterans didn't necessarily play a lot, so you've got some veterans and a lot of young teams. This is going to be a better basketball team next year than they are this year. They only lose two singles. Deep three. Brett Lowe off the mark. Offensive board. Childs. He'll go to the line. See, Childs did a nice job of going up and rebounding the ball, but then he brought it down, so he lost a seven foot two advantage and became six feet two. Watch this here. Good box out. Gets pushed right there, right in the middle, right there. That's a nice job. Now, watch if you keep rolling. He does a great job. Keep it up. They just keep it up. He brings it down. He gets fouled, so now he goes to the free throw line. So if you're Hampton, you're, you're happy that he brought it down because he's only a 64% free throw shooter. His field goal percentage is almost as good as his free throw percentage. From a Morgan standpoint, big guy, keep it up high. Six offensive rebounds already for Morgan State, but the question is,
can they translate that into points? So far, they have not been able to. And the more free throws they miss, the more it becomes more of a mental thing as well. Nice block there. There's a block by Childs. Fifth in the conference in field goal percentage, and of course, up there in blocks as well. We've seen the last couple of ball games a lot of really good shot blockers. Giles Smith last week. Devon Mox, Maxwell leads the MEAC in shot blocks, watching him tonight along with Childs. Yeah, these are the top two teams in blocks in the MEAC. And steals for that matter. Both very good defensive clubs. And you mentioned Devon Maxwell. He's there awaiting a rebound, possibly, off a free throw miss. And you think about Giles Smith goes about 6'8", 6'9", down at Savannah, who we saw last week. Giles goes 7'2". Maxwell a bit undersized in the post at 6'7", but excellent timing and great leaping ability. That's the third straight front end of a one and one that Ian Giles has missed. Largest lead of the game for Hampton has been eight. Here's the lob inside, Okoroba. Altered his shot, got his own miss, and got fouled. And that's on Childs, I think. Okoroba does a nice job here getting inside position, head and shoulder. That ball is just an air ball, but goes up and is able to get it. I think they say it was maybe partially blocked. Might have been touched. Nevertheless, he continues to play. Goes to the line, and Charles picks up his second. Okoroba, 6'8", junior out of Garland, Texas. 61% free throw shooter. And he misses. Keep Mark this down, 10.06 on the clock. And Hampton with an eight-point lead, and Charles picks up his second foul. Yeah, you can see the frustration on Charles' face. He's a little flummoxed right now. Tyre Heath, number 12 in White, has to check in for him. And it promptly goes off Heath's hands out of bounds. It'll be a fresh 35 for the Pirates. Todd Bozeman is clearly perplexed. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, either he's flummoxed or perplexed. <laughs> Get it right. Dude. Neither one is good. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Especially coming from the same team. What a great job Todd Bozeman has done in his years here at... Morgan State. React Championships played in the championship game last year. That's a four seed. Got them to the NCAAs a couple of seasons ago. Very intense competitor. And told me today, said he's a good golfer. Said he said, Stan, I'm better golfer than you are. I said, I don't know about that, Ty. We will find out come April and May. Run into that one and one is missed. Neither team lighten it up at the Ooh. free throw line. A free throw shooting clinic it has not been thus far in this MIAC contest. Under 10 to go in the first half. High set now. Look for the little shuffle. There's the X cut right there. See if you can get a cut on a baseline screen here. Here we go. Screen's coming. 10 on the shot clock. Fretlow kicks. Bozeman fires. Nothing but air. Just a hard time for Morgan State running their half-court offense. They don't have any type of rhythm. This is one of those situations where Justin Black, number five, has got to take over the basketball game, try to get an easy basket, try to get something off the defensive game. Defense, 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 defense. It goes off Heath, it'll stay. Hampton basketball. Very choppy first 10 plus minutes of this game. Stand 16 combined fouls. And not a lot of points to show for those fouls because the free throw shooting's been so inactive. Yeah, and, and you can't get a rhythm offensively. And to be honest with you, you can't get a good defensive rhythm. Get in somebody's hand, get up there and contest a shot, get a block. It's just too easy. See the pass is just a little off. That was inside Okoroba. And he's fouled. Win down at Johnson C. Smith and his cousin, little Stevie, is the women's coach at Johnson C. Smith. So the fit when they talk about the family business, the family business for the Jordans has been for a long time. Basketball that led a lot of teams, great developers, 
great people. Little Buck, Big Buck, Little Stevie, Big Stevie. Everybody knows who they are when you say Coach Joyner. It doesn't matter which one and which two. At one time, all four were head coaches. Do you imagine what that family reunion must be like? <laughs> Steve Joyner Sr., where Buck, Little Buck played his basketball at Smith Point. He's the Hall of Fame next month. Here's a steal by Hampton. He underneath goes down hard. And again, a very physical game. And Hampton continues to go inside, get second chance opportunities, and will go back to the free throw line. It's been the Pirates with all the fire in the first half of this first half. Half court trap didn't do a good job of recognizing, getting the deflection. There's a the ball goes up, and you see, go after it, get contact, go to the line. <laughs> So Breon Key with a chance to add to what is now the largest lead of the game for Hampton. 11, 25-14, and Key has won. Breon Key, a sophomore, has developed a transfer from Old Dominion, 73% free throw shooter. We'll talk a lot about this as this game gets on. This is going to be a grind them out basketball game. You're going to have to hold the ball. You're going to have to make free throws. He's pressure again. Morgan State's been held scoreless in the last four minutes. An 8-0 Pirates run. And there's careless, another steal. Careless pass that time by Hubbard. Maxwell thought better of the three. Almost turned it over. Great idea if he recognized it about a half a second sooner. Okoroba would have been able to score that time. There's Powers. Nice take to the hole. Deron Powers, his second field goal of the game. He has five. And the lead is ballooned to 14. And Aldo Hubbard... And off the steal, almost had a chance for 16. He's going to step up and take a shot. Are you surprised Justin Black's not on the floor? Yeah, I am right now. Bretlow, nice look inside, and he... Ends the drought, his first two of the game. Tahi has been slowed by back and the injuries this season. They feel like he's got a really good upside as a scorer. Maxwell, he's bouncy. Goes off the backboard, no good. Long pass. What an outlet. Pretlow with the left hand. Need more of that. Great job. And all of this shit hit by Hubbard. What I was going to say a moment ago is without the big guy Charles in the game, there's no real shot blocker. Humphrey can block a few, but there's not really anybody that can intimidate. And you see Hampton taking full advantage of it, going inside continuously, pounding the glass, getting paid shots. Mini run by Morgan. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Powers looking to break down Pretlow. What a circus shot! Man! Circle that one as a Sports Center Top 10 nominee. We've had a no look shot now, a little running flipper off the shoulder. My goodness. Two pointer and another air ball. Oh! And our cameraman just did a. Happy to say Burn is okay, and it looks like Heath will be too. We'll give you an update if we get it. Back to basketball. Offensive foul on Hampton. We're going the other way. We saw a couple of spurts. We got another look at Heath there. Certainly hope he'll be able to get back. And we saw some spurts on Morgan State defense and being able to go from offense, defense to offense a moment ago with some easy baskets. Now after the timeout, you're back in this game emotionally. But you've got to be able to convert. They're not shooting the ball well. Seven out of 20 shooting. That free throw percentage is going to have to get better. But the good thing about it, Morgan doesn't turn the ball over. They've only turned it over five times so far in this game. There's a three-pointer in and out. Meek with a rebound. Check that. That's Deontay Adams who's checked in. Number 32 in blue. Three-pointer off the mark. Another offensive rebound, and that's Devon Maxwell. He has eight. Seventh offensive rebound of the evening for the Pirates of Hampton. Especially with Childs on the bench in foul trouble. Hampton has really got to work. There's Shaq Duncan. His fourth point of the night. Duncan's long. Fairly decent athlete. 6'9 is going to have to take up some of the mid-paint slack. 
and be that own ball and basket the finger now with Charles out of the game. There's Maxwell working in the post. No good. Another offensive rebound for Hampton. Adams misses. Duncan clears. And Duncan got a piece of that first shot. Nice look from Bozeman up ahead to Hubbard. And one. Well, calculated risk, or gamble, should we say, from Todd Bozeman keeping his top scorer, Justin Black, on the bench, Shot but a little block. bit of a run. Shot block inside there by Hubbard, but again, he does a nice job. You get the ball pushed down the floor. Duncan gets his hands on it. Hubbard on the other end, score it. And if Hubbard can score the basketball, then, you're, then you can survive right now with Black out of the ball game. Again, you got to finish this out with three-point plays. So Morgan State's got it down to 10. 5.20 to go. Okoroga, nice move with the left hand. And we've not really seen a lot of that out of him in the past. He has had a couple of nice scoring nights, six games in doubles, but that was a nice low post move and the finish by Emmanuel Okoroga. Too strong inside versus the big guy, Shaq Duncan. And it looks like Bozeman will be content to keep his two top players on the bench. Childs, the seven-footer, and Black averaging 18.4 a game. The 2014 college football season starts now with National Signing Day coming up on Wednesday. ESPN used 11 hours of coverage will feature reporters at a dozen college campuses, live player announcements, and up-to-the-minute class ranking updates. ESPN News National Signing Day starts Wednesday at 11 a.m. I've been told UCF head coach George O'Leary will be one of the cavalcade of college football stars who will be making appearances. What a great season they had this past year, huh? Put UCF football on the map. Three-pointer way off the mark, but another offensive board. Okoroba can't convert, and we're going the other way. And I just peeked over at Todd Bozeman, and he looked at his troops and said, Rebound! This is a team that only averages 36.9 rebounds a game, so not one of their strengths coming in. Well, neither one of these teams really do a great job in number 11 and 12 rebounding teams in the Mideastern Athletic Conference, but what you'll get out of them are those second-chance opportunities, especially when Childs is playing on one end and you've got Maxwell on the other. Nice job inside so far. You know, since we talked about National Signing Day, I know you do your fair share of football, too. Any surprise <laughs> that Alabama and A&M have the two top classes right now? Not Alabama, no, sir. Re his reload. And Blossom misses. Be interested to see what kind of recruiting class Texas is going to have. We're thinking about that with new coaching staff. Charlie Strong addressed the Longhorn faithful at halftime of their basketball game where they beat Kansas handily. See what the USC Trojans are going to be able to do. Duke and the East Carolina Pirates. I'm going to throw all my people there. I'm going to throw all my teams in. <laughs> Epically bad shooting from the free throw line for Morgan State. Three for ten. Speaking of three, that three ball off the mark. Cover corrals it. If you're Morgan State, if you can just find a way to just chip at this lead, keep playing good defense, get some high percentage shots, cut this thing about seven or eight at the half, if not better, you're back in this basketball game. These next 355, I think, are huge for the psyche of Morgan State basketball. That was a block by Hampton, but a foul called, and with 3.52, we'll take immediate timeout. A 12-point Hampton lead, and we have a sports. But this is a team that has some leaders. Hubbard has done a nice job and stepped up with 10 points. But some other guys are going to have to chip in. If you're going to see these two guys, he's found 3.52 and protect them, then, hey, guys, you got to make some plays right now. And they've got to make some free throws. Here's Pretlow at the line with another opportunity. And a sigh of relief collectively from the Morgan State bench. I've never seen a team employ a hack a team strategy, but this might be the night you see it. Fretlow one for two. I tell you, it's not good 
and the temperature outside is warmer than your free throw shooting percentage. It's not good. Shooting 27 percent, it's 29 degrees. There's Powers inside. Maxwell goes back out. A little two-man game. Very active inside. Look at the balance by Javon Maxwell. You could sense he really wanted that inside. With, I get, without Childs in the ball game, Duncan not in the game either. There's no real shot blocker in there for Oregon State. Here's Hubbard. Blocked from behind by Mercado. It'll stay Morgan State basketball. And Ed Jonah Jr. and staff have wisely elected to say, let's just live and die inside, not take as many jump shots. We haven't talked about Darden a lot, and Mercado had that 1-3 early in the first half. Really haven't shot a lot of three-point bats. They've just pounded it inside. There's Bozeman. He has the lone three-pointer for Morgan State. Skip pass almost picked off. Eight on the shot clock. Keep in mind, Maxwell, number 20 for Hampton, has two fouls on it. And Emmanuel Modi, the 5'11 freshman, knocks down a three-pointer. Guy that gets limited playing time, going to have to step up and make some plays, does just that. Mady's three, just the second three of the game for Morgan State. A little slow coming out on that ball screen. They like to go under as opposed to go over the top. Modi makes them pay for that. Three for seven and two for seven, respectively, for Hampton and Morgan State. Hampton's done their damage in the paint. That's where they go again, and we've got an offensive foul. Said Modi should have said Predlow. On As of late, only three and six. This Morgan conference. State team went out to Eugene back before Christmas and played them, and they were really on a roll. Last couple games of struggle. It's going to be a huge game in the Pac-12. So here's Mady running the point for Morgan State. Mady, Pretlow, Bozeman in the game, small guards. Pretlow almost turned it over, and he did. It'll be Hampton basketball. Again, a team in Morgan State that does not turn the ball over that much, relatively speaking. That was their seventh turnover already tonight. Here comes Powers. Two minutes to go in the half. Powers, Maxwell in the ball game. How long can him keep Maxwell in the game with two fouls? This is a time on the offensive side as Powers tries to try to take over this two-man game. Eight on the shot clock. And they're going to call the foul on number 34 in white, Cedric Blossom. So Hampton in the bonus. They'll shoot two free throws. Maxwell has a team-high ten points. Tied for game-high honors with Anthony Hubbard, who also has ten. Free throws are contagious. Maybe they are for both teams tonight. Third personal for Blossom. So that is a key storyline going into the second half is Morgan State foul trouble. That guy in Blossom at 6'6 has been an alternative post guy. So more of the inside heavy lift has got to go on the shoulder of the bubble. Bucket here brings it to single digits. Take your time right now if you're Morgan and execute. For cutters. Hubbard. And Anthony Hubbard will go to the line and shoot two. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. Well, the personnel Todd Bozeman has on the floor in these closing minutes of the first half, you get the sense like. It's Anthony Hubbard's show right now for the Bears. Man, he upped it. BJ's daddy. Every time I see him, I say, you give me some tickets? I mean, what, what I got to do to go to a baseball game? He's got to be a proud pop, right? Well, despite the free throw woes, Anthony Hubbard already with an impressive stat line. 10 points and 11 rebounds. 
A double-double in the first half for number 11 in white. This is fourth game. He's had a double-double this season. I don't think he's ever had one this early. Nice back cut. Hubbard, his 12th board. Morgan State can't convert. Just under a minute to go in the half, and the Bears will have a chance to regroup. You know, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I think if you're Coach Joyner, you've got to be happy that your team's not really shot the ball well at yourself, but you've got the lead. You should go into the lead at halftime. And, and if you're Todd Bozeman, you can't wait for these 58 seconds to get done just to settle this team down. So, man, change uniforms or something. Let's just... Get, get a new attitude. We're shooting for it. We're not playing the best defense. And even when we get fouled, which should be an advantage, you're, you're not taking advantage by making free throws. That was a nice take by Pretlow. He'll go to the line and shoot, too. And if shoot-arounds are any indication, earlier this afternoon, Todd Bozeman was reading his team the riot act, telling them that they've got to get more engaged. Well, they came out flat tonight for sure. Attacking the rim, but certainly not making the most of it at the free throw. And that's something that can never happen. I mean, you're playing at home. It's a conference game. It's on television. You know, you should be sky high, jacked up, ready to play. But a lot of guys kind of, you know, everybody's a little different. So here's Dante Pretlow at the line. He's one for two tonight. Make it one for three. And you, can, and you can feel that little blah. You're talking about the team now fired up. This Morgan State crowd, which is usually, you know, the six man here is usually all very active in Hill Field House. They're not really excited. One for two for Pretlow. He has four points. I, I like this full court pressure. Make it hard to get the ball. Well, maybe get a steal. Maybe get some excitement before we go out of the half. And Buck Joyner. Let's see if Hampton tries to come run with some special play right now. We've got a shooter in the game in Mercado and another shooter on the other side in Brian Dard, number 14. First time we're going to look like it'll be a little bit 2-3 zone out of, out of Morgan State. So they want to talk everything down. Second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Ten on the shot clock. Powers. Yes. No, they waved it off. Offensive foul on Deron Powers. Powers starts from a long way. Watch this. Stay inside. Get great defensive position there. That's a nice call there. Duke Edsel and company right on top of that offensive foul call. Now the shot clock is off. We know Morgan State would love nothing more than to go into halftime on a little bit of a high note with a bucket here to close out the first 20 minutes. It was a good idea, but you've got to go inside and then jump stop and take the mid-range shot or either kick it to the other side. Powers goes too deep, alertly defensive play by the Bears of Morgan State. Psychologically, if you can score, if you could get a three, man, there would be a lot of excitement inside here as we go into half. Loose pass. Ten seconds. Start to start your offense about right now. Five seconds. Corner. Three. <laughs> Off the mark. The follow is good. And who else but no Black and Childs, the two best players for Morgan State, spent most of the first half on the bench. This team shot miserably from the free throw line. Five for 17. Only two for eight for three. And yet, Stan... Be thankful for the little things. The team only down seven. Collectively, these guys only played 18 minutes, and out of that 18 minutes, they were one out of six and three points. So you're going to get more out of Childs and Black, you'd like to think. You've got to keep the energy level up for Hubbard, and now Hampton's going to have to play some basketball. Hampton 4-0 on the road in conference, looking to make it 5-0. Here's Powers, nice look, but it was mishandled and a Hampton turnover to start the second half. It's Javon Presley. So Presley lost the ball. Make matters worse, got whistled for the foul. 
Presley's been very quiet in this basketball game. No shot attempts, no rebounds in seven minutes of play. And he was the guy that took Okoroba's place in the starting lineup. And he's been that other guy that's been like an intimidator, another physical presence. They go right to Childs on the low post. The left-hander, jump hook, in and out. Nice look. He can't get frustrated by that. Keep on playing, big fella. Keep on playing. And you just sense like the crowd was on the edge of its seat if that one dropped. Another errant pass by Powers. So two trips down the floor, two turnovers for Hampton. Not Possession hour to Morgan State. The way that Ed Joyner Jr. would want to start. You see him encouraging his team, but right now he said one of the things that he was talking about the other day was that we just have a close games the way we need to. And we, we've had some close wins. We're doing okay in the conference, but we're such a young basketball team that we're up and down. And sometimes when we're down, we're really down. We've got to find a way to close things out. Buck Joyner has instilled a mantra with this team. DTP, discipline, toughness, passion. Well, he learned that as a child and he's continued. All three of the mother Joyner coaches think the same way. So it's just on that natural, he's going to pass that on. You would think that Justin Black's going to get a shot up sooner than later. He does, they wave it off. Fouls on the floor. He's going to go on number 21, Kieran Brown. Trying to find a way to isolate on him. Brown, one of the better defenders for this Hampton basketball team now. He's settled with his third foul, I think. Here's Black. Yes! A welcome sight. For Bears fans, six you points now for Black. Worry about Black not scoring in the first half. He's a senior. He's a leader. He understands that it's a 40-minute basketball game. He very light little penny last week. He'll take over when he needs to. There's Powers inside the three-point line. That was a two-pointer, so nine points for Powers to lead back up to six. I think you'll see the offensive efficiency pick up on both sides in the second half. Go inside to the big guy again. Let him get a touch. Let him get engaged in this game. Nice job of physical kind of moving away. Presley, 30. There's Black. They call him JB. That's an NBA three, and it's way short. Offensive rebound, number 13 of the night. And look at that for you. That's good play. Very unselfish. Throw to the big guy. Get him in the ball game with the dunk. First two of the game for the big man. They call him Big Slew, Ian Childs. Yeah, you got to be smart if you're Childs. You're back in this mid league. Don't pick up a cheap foul. Amazingly, just a four-point game. Hampton's led throughout. Nice take oh, my by Presley. No look plays and then spin and dunk. He's going to turn and look at me. I didn't have anything to do with that. Presley, leave me alone. Calling me out. <laughs> Here's Childs again. Off the window. In and out. Black. Followed it up and got fouled. So we're seeing those two stars from Morgan State assert themselves in the early second nice half. Nice lob there. Very unselfish play by Black. Gets it to the big guy. He kept it up high that time and finished it. Now watch the response. Turn, drop step, dunk. And then he's going down the floor. He's going to look this way like I had something to do with that. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Look here. See? It's all about me. <laughs> What's wrong, Presley? Unfortunately for Presley, he just got whistled for foul number four. And that's the same thing I was talking about a moment ago with Charles. You're engaged in the game. You're emotionally invested. Don't pick up the dumb foul on the defensive end trying to get back in it offensively. He'll sit for a long time. Things taking a turn for the better in the second half. Not only are Black and Charles on the floor, but Justin Black just hit a free throw. A quick check of the five on the floor for the Bears, and Childs is back on the bench. One for two for Black. It's a five-point game. And with Presley picking up his fourth foul, Todd elects to take Childs out of the game. Doesn't want him to pick up a cheap one. We'll get him back in there. He's yep, back he's in there. He's back in there. Out. So if I'm Morgan State, I'll attack him. Go, go to the big guy. A little bit of a zone out of this now. Goes the world a short corner. Spins baseline, and there's the foul on Childs. You can see that foul about to happen from over here. And, and why do you say that? 
never got in the defensive stance or never allowed the, def the offensive player to get by him and then try to retain the possession. Watch this. See, good job there. Cut the baseline off. He doesn't cut the baseline off, and then he reaches. So that's an easy call, and it, it is seven feet, two inches tall. It's hard to shoot over you. Get your spot, hold your hands up high, make him shoot it to the top of the roof. Childs to the bench. Three fouls. Number 44 in white, Shaq Duncan checks in. He was active in the first half, had four points. So now in less than 30 seconds, both big power guys have picked up their third and fourth foul, respectively. Picked off. Here comes Hampton. Darden takes it himself and got fouled and will go to the line. Well, for all Morgan State's free throw woes, it hasn't been that much better for Hampton. First half, they were 9 for 16. Okoroba just missed those two. And now the best shooter on this Hampton team, Brian Darden, goes to the line. 78% from the line, 35% from three-point range. And he calmly nails the first. Darden's a very streaky shooter, so the fact that he's going to the free throw line and possibly can make these two Think about that the next couple possessions down offensively. Interesting you should mention how streaky is the last time these two teams played. He had nine points in the final 50 seconds of that game. And he has come in and they're letting him shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. 41 threes coming into today's game. So, yeah, he can be very active. Back up to a seven-point advantage. You're... Morgan State continue to be offensively aggressive. Here Todd said we've got to attack, attack, attack. Good pressure on the Hampton defense. There's Black. Took it himself. And Darden comes away with it. Not a good shot that time for Hampton. No numbers for the Pirates. Maxwell. Look at that fake and take. Devon Maxwell. Top scorer in the game with a dozen. A couple of seasons ago, he wouldn't have been able to put it on the floor that far away and be able to finish. Here's Black. Took it right up against Okoroba and got the bump to end the bucket. That's a foul for the MEAC tournament at the scope in middle of March. It's going to be special, and you can see why. I mean, Savannah State, we saw last week Hampton, this team battling Norfolk State that won it last year when undefeated, and North Carolina Central and LaVale Moten and the Flying Eagles are just playing good basketball. Remember, North Carolina Central knocked off NC State early in December this year. So this is the team that we're going to hear about. And, and just, it's going to get better and better down the stretch. Especially as you're making that second run. Here's something to remember, too. Hampton and Norfolk have yet to play. They're going to play twice within two weeks, starting on the 15th. That's a big-time rivalry, just like Morgan State and Coppin State is. Wow, in Baltimore. You, you don't even know what that Battle of the Bay is like. Maxwell again. He's heating up. He has 14. That's a game high. And a very nice low bounce pass away from the defender. The only person who could get that ball was Maxwell. He caught it in the same motion. Scored. Nice play. There's a turnover. Bodies collide at midcourt. Play on, said the officials. Try to force it inside. Another Morgan State turnover. They have numbers three on two. Powers, jump stop, got the foul. That foul's going to go on Blake Bozeman. Stan, let's go inside the play. Well, we just talked about it a moment ago. Staying low if you're a post guy is essential. And watch that. He got great position there, and he's going to step to the block, okay? And see how the pass is low, and it's a direct line there. And if you do that, and you get to the outside defender, post guys have a great, you need great position in the inside. And you just catch, turn, and score. Nice pass to the post. And if you give those post guys nice passes, they'll make you so very happy. Now Powers in double digits. He has 10. And if there's one player on this floor tonight who you can count on at the free throw line, it's number 11 in blue, Duran Powers. 86% yeah. free throw shoot. Third best in the conference. Powers and Darden, two of the better free throw shooters in the conference, also on this team. And you want those guys handling the basketball the last five to six minutes of this ballgame. 
two for two there, 11 points. He had 11 points, six rebounds, and seven assists in their one-point overtime win against Coppin State. And now the momentum that Morgan State was developing with the ba basket by Black and the dunk by Childs has kind of gone away. So offensively, they got to find a way to score. They're going to get Darden with the hand check. And just like when it seemed like the Bears were poised to make a run and steal some momentum back, the lead is back up to 10 for him. Turnaround no good. Good defense by Maxwell and the Pirates. Yeah, but he helped him out by catching and putting it to the floor. That's a power basket. You don't need to put that down. Catch it that close to the basket, just elevate. Duncan 6-9. Showing some zone look this time out of Morgan. Does Hampton recognize it? Ooh, Powers turns it over. Shaq Duncan, an imposing presence at the top of that zone. Well, you mentioned the MEAC tournament in Norfolk Scope Arena. It's the heart and soul of the MEAC. Can't wait to get up there. Saw Commissioner Dennis Thomas early in the evening. Very excited not only about the tournament moving back up to Norfolk, but what these teams are doing. It's going to be a close race down the stretch. Almost picked off, but Justin Black cans a three ball, his second three pointer of the night. Gamble, he has 13. Just a little late coming out there, and if you do that, Justin Black makes you pay for that. Nice look in the shot. Look inside, Maxwell double team kicks it out. Powers again. Second trip down consecutively where Duran Powers was caught I for traveling. He got away with a travel before that pass. And watch that just a second late trying to get out there to contest that was Darden. Justin Black knew what was going on. It's a two-pointer from Cedric Blossom, his first two of the game. And a 5-0 run has made it a five-point deficit for Morgan State. You see the intensity right now on Black's face as he guards key. Hampton's got to value the basketball right now. Good hands by Blossom. Here's Black. Tossed it up and dunk it. Johnny on the spot. A 7-0 Bears run. Junior not taking the timeout right now. And he does. Yes, he does. We go to break. Oh. But your post didn't go up to meet the pass. And if you don't go meet the pass, you get steal and score the other way. So you get the good post, bad post. Little nuances make all the difference in the world. Shortening the distance of your pass. Stepping to meet your pass. Watching the ball in your hands. Hampton five turnovers this half. They only had four field goals as well. That's never a good thing. Here's Cooks. Let's your freshman off the mark. Nico muscled his way in and got two. Cooks may not have been the person you wanted to take that shot after the timeout, but Miko does a nice job going to the glass. Hampton has 10 offensive rebounds tonight, and they've been able to convert five of those. Good ball to the NBA three for Bozeman. Great look. Six points for the coach's son on two three-pointers. This is the closest they've been since the opening minute of the game. Blake Bozeman and Black combined for 54 of the 88 three-pointers. They've had two three-pointers the last couple possessions for Morgan State. Maxwell. Tamika. Another traveling violation on Hampton. They're coming unraveled. Unbelt at Georgia State. Greg and Doug McDermott. They're ranked 12th in the country now. Craig and Colin Neal. You might not know him as Craig Neal. A lot of people call him Curly <laughs> at New Mexico. And of course, Steve Alford, who left New Mexico to go to UCLA, his son Bryce went with him. And I knew him as Noodles back in the day. Oh, noodles, that's right. 
There's another three. Remember what we told you early on, don't worry about Justin Black. Senior, been there, done that. Take it over now. There are more father-son combos in Division I basketball. Stan Heath for USF, his son Josh plays for him. Here's the turnover, and here's a chance for Morgan State. And Justin Black will go to the line with a chance to put the Bears up for the first time in this game. And with Ian Childs on the bench, somebody else has got to step up from the inside. It's been Big Shaq. Shaquille Duncan gets the block, the recovery, and pushes the ball ahead. And Justin Black goes to the free throw line with a chance to give the Morgan State Bears, down as much as 14 early in this ball game, a chance to take the lead. Justin Black and the line of Bears, two shots. Black puts him on top by one. Black looked good on that shot. Remember, he's only a 57% free throw shooter on the season. Super Tuesday doubleheader on ESPNU coming up. First at seven, an SEC battle. Ole Miss and number 18, Kentucky. Then at nine, the ACC takes the court when Wake Forest takes on an angry Blue Devils team, along with Jabari Parker. Mississippi, Kentucky, Wake Forest, Duke. The action tips off at seven on ESPNU, also live on Watch ESPN. Two for two for Black, a 14-2 Morgan State run. Defense! 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 How does Hampton have to respond? What do they do? Patience right now. Nick Metz will get a touch. Okoroba off the miss. And he gets fouled. There's another offensive rebound. You were alluding to that earlier. They've done a really nice job in converting those offensive rebounds into points in the paint for putbacks, either going to the free throw line. I'd like to see Maxwell touch the ball simply for the fact that he's a bombing factor on this team. Ricardo's a three-point shooter. He's a catch-and-shoot guy. You want to get him in rhythm, moving the ball side to side. Powers, again, a very solid scorer, can score the basketball. Darden not in the game for the Pirates of Hampton. Okoroba, six points, but he's only four for ten from the free throw line. Make it five for 11. Nice free throws. Seems like all the players are starting to tighten their belt buckles a little bit. Free throw percentage going up, temperature going down. Tied at 52, ten and a half to go. Blossom back in the ball game. They were trying to post him a moment ago. Now back in the play because we uh, Duncan. Patience here for Morgan. And off to Black. Ten on the shot clock. Another three. He's a senior. Not to say anymore. From nearby to Matha High School, Justin Black lighting it up in the second half. He has a game high 21. Quinn Cook, Victor Oladipo, one-time teammates. Said he talks to them a couple of times a week. They're going to like this. A little congestion there, but in rhythm, feet set, knocks down the three-pointer. He told me today the only thing that he hasn't been able to accomplish at Morgan State is to win that MEAC title. That's what he wants. You see a senior playing with a sense of urgency. 16 second-half points. 17-4 run the last six minutes for the Bears. Inside, nice look. A little miscommunication on defense. No communication on defense. Found yourself looking and not playing a ball you man principle. Never should get that easy basket off an inbound set. There's Hubbard who had the monster first half. Childs back in the game. Through the double team, and Ian Childs will go to the line. Been a frustrating night for the redshirt senior. He has become a more aggressive player throughout his career. Really didn't have to do a lot the last couple of seasons because he had the Jackson kid that could score at 6'11 in the perimeter. Now he's having to step up. 64% at the free throw line. Has been sitting for a few minutes. Got to find a way to get in that little bit of rhythm, move around, get a little sweat going. But can you make these free throws? That's what the big thing is now. It's been a forgettable night from the field and from the line for Ian Childs. Run for six, and that's his first free throw made 
after three consecutive misses. That was a very nice free throw. Had a nice flow to it. Finished high, followed through. Presley now coming back in the game. Remember, he picked up his fourth with 17-25. Hampton had a five-point lead when he went out of the game. Short on that one. Hampton comes away with it. Cooks pushing. The foul slam no good from Brown. Here's Childs. And they're going the other way. I think he stepped out. Caught that ball too close to the basket, too close to the baseline. I like the idea, give it to the big guy. Hampton gets a break with the missed dunk. Powers. Another follow. Brown comes up empty again. Hampton has dominated the offensive boards. Even though Charles didn't get that rebound, the Hampton guys knew the seven-footer was around. Season stand. Justin Black was certainly one of, if not the favorite. Where do you think he stands right now in the mix? He's right in there. I, I think the further that Morgan goes, the better chance he has of being the player of the year. They lead it by two after trailing for the overwhelming majority of this game. A lot of great candidates in the BAC this year. Childs. Left hand jump hook, no good. Childs gets it back. And they call him for traveling. I like he's aggressive. He's not afraid right now. Got on the right side of the baseline. Turned around. Took a mid-range jumper. An offensive rebound. Let's see. Does he take a couple extra steps? I like that shot there. See, the only thing he didn't follow it up, but that's okay. He got a rebounder. I don't know about that one. I'm with you, big fella. Protect the big guy. Got big, long strides. Take an extra step in there, man. Chance to tie or take the lead for Hampton. They're undefeated on the road in the MEAC this year. Closing basketball game has been one of the things that Coach Jordan's feared all season. Brown, strong move, big follow by Presley. for these teams, especially the second half, have done a great job of offensive rebound. You can make a tape of just offensive position and getting second chance opportunities tonight would be a great night to look at that. Time to shoot. Here's Blossom from the wing. Battle for the board. And we're going Hamptons has tightened up significantly. Morgan State has turned it on in the second half and come back all the way to tie the actual red right a couple times in the second half. But with 7.33 to go, we're knotted at 56. Hampton a chance to take the lead. Looking to improve to 7-2 in conference. North Carolina Central leads the conference right now. They already have seven wins. Cooks off the mark. Here's Black. Black himself, but it's blocked. Maxwell. He's down on the injury. They're going to stop this. And Cooks looks like. Well, Hampton's played eight games this year. 10 points or less, two and six in it. So finding ways to finish it out. Remember, this is a very young team, only two seniors. And you look on the court right now for the Pirates. There's not a senior on the floor. Well, I, see, I, I see Maxwell. I'm sorry, Maxwell. So there's one senior in the rest of the underclassmen. Foul's going to go on Bozeman. Giles will patrol the baseline as Darden inbounds to Presley. Nearly stolen away by Bozeman. 
And they say that he stepped on the sideline. That's going to be a turnover for Hampton. Emmanuel Upton was right there to make the call. 13th turnover for the Pirates. Take a look right here. Right there. Right foot steps. Just gets a little bit. Manny Upton right on top of him. You got two sons in the major leagues. You know you got good eyesight, good hand eye coordination. Here's Blossom. And they're going to call Brown for the hand check on Justin Black. At this point, offensively for Morgan State, easy for me to say, but put your coaching hat on. I would say feed the beast. Get Justin Black the ball as much as he can. I, I want Justin Black to have some touches, but if Child's in the game, I want him to get a few touches too. You've seen a lot of times tonight that when the ball is going inside the paint, they've doubled him up. If Child's is very aggressive, he can get that skip pass to a shooter, Bozeman and Black, very competent three-point shooters. And it also allows for driving opportunities too. Blossom misses the one and one. McHugh on Brown saddled with four fouls. That's a child. And immediately Shaq Duncan rises off the bench and Todd Bozeman's going to have to Substitute for a seven-footer. Didn't do a great job. See, moving and getting him top. See, right there where he hooked him at the top. That's an easy call there. That's, there's nothing you can complain about on that time. He did a nice job accepting contact on the initial screen. He got on the high side. I probably would have preferred him being on the low side on the baseline side at seven feet tall. Got caught on the high side and then on on the outside close. Presley, a 64% free throw shooter, hits the first. That gives Hampton the lead, 57-56. In and out, and Duncan snares it for the Bears. Leon Key's got the assignment against Black. Black blows by. And scores 22 points for Justin Black. Black's too crafty. Black's career high is 28. He had 24 the last time these teams played. Here comes Pretlow. Nice look to Duncan. Hampton didn't do a good job in transition. You gotta get back. See the best. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow. Going the way of the Pirates with 5.48 to go. A good bit of coaching there. You see it, Jonah Jr., Tillinger, Vaughn Presley. Hey, you got to have your head on a swivel. See the basketball. Presley just started playing again second semester. So he's only played about 10 basketball games. So he's still got to get his rhythm. Started at Towson, played at Robert Morris, transferred. Now here at Hampton. Still got two more good seasons left to go. Here's Mercado. No good, but Darden. Picked it up when no one else did. Blossom. Foul. A big basketball games yet to play in the MEAC. Braveview AM, Alabama AM set to tip off and swack basketball immediately following our game here on ESPNU. It'll be a nice game down at Elmore Gymnasium, Hutchfield, Alabama. Both teams battling right in the middle of the pack for the SWAC championship. Blossom. That's his first free throw made of the evening. A 59% free throw shooter. Gives Morgan State a four point lead. If you're scoring at home, 528 left in the game. Just get a piece of paper out. Just make a little notch on your paper. A free throws made in turnovers. This final five now, 25. The team that makes the most free throws and the fewest turnovers, that team's going to win this game. Counting down to five minutes to go. Largest lead of the game for the Bears. And one and done for the Pirates. Black lines it up. Badly misses. Okoroba clears. Not what you wanted. 
the ball and score for the Bears. Under five to go. Maxwell with the road in the game. They've done a nice job inside. Worked the high screen this time. Mercado got it tipped away out of bounds. It'll stay Hampton basketball. Now, Mercado is a shooter. He's a good spot shooter right there, 24. But he's got to know what is a good shot. Just because you get the basketball, a longtime coach and friend of mine used to tell me, Reggie Fly used to say, just because you open don't mean you got to shoot the ball. Okay? Just because you got it don't mean you got to shoot it. Get in rhythm. Foul call here. And get a good look. And so people say, well, what's a good look? Well, obviously, if you're a, a good shooter, you want to get those shoulders square. But I also talk about a good shot being one where you've got some board coverage. Should you miss it, you've got a teammate there to get that rebound and either kick it back or put it back. Just don't fire it up because you got it in your hand. There's the ball, Maxwell. Misses, but Keyron Brown rips away the rebound. Another second chance opportunity. Another foul this time on Fretwell. Even down five points when you miss a free throw and you're able to get that second chance to rebound, now you're able to run some clock and get a better shot. Or in this case for Hampton, you go to the free throw line. So you always want to be able to score points, especially with the clock stop. It's a bonus. So that was really important possession that you didn't get from Morgan State. Powers misses the one and one. Free throws evading both clubs tonight. Another missed free throw. There's Hubbard. He was the star of the first half. It's been the Justin Black show in the second half for Morgan State. Brown, probably the best on ball defender. Now guarding Justin Black, 21 on five. Five to shoot. Brettler spins and knocks it down. Talk about a money shot with the shot clock running down. Get low with Brettler. Okoroba. He'll go to the line and shoot two. And Miak and that guy, Marvin, the human eraser, Webster. He led Morgan State to a championship many years ago, played with the Knicks for a long time. I mean, you think about the great history of Miak basketball. It starts in the post. It starts with that guy, Marvin Webster. Okoroba round it out. Back in 74, they won a national championship on a Division II level. That plays a long time, coach. A lot of great basketball and football history here. And recent history has been successful as well. Todd Bozeman's been here. This is now his eighth year. And in his first seven, the Bears have reached the MEAC Tournament Finals five times. Won the championship in 09 and 10. Won another one previously in 77. Hampton, a new addition to the conference the last 20 years, but has come up and won four MEAC championships. Duke Getzel whistles the foul on number 23 of Blue Dwight Meikle. And that'll send Morgan State to the line. Both teams in the double bonus. Two free throws with every subsequent foul. And it's Anthony Hubbard who had all of his 12 points in the first half. Misses his first free throw attempt. And to go along with those 12 points, 15 rebounds. That would make the human eraser proud. Wouldn't it? He blocked shots in every direction. Now, we talk about the shot blockers of the day. And he, what he could do is, in addition to blocking shots, he could run the floor like a gazelle and finish up. Couldn't dunk then, so he just lay it over the rim, hit the little mid-range jump shot. One of the best in the business, Marvin Webster. Three and a half to go and another foul whistle. That's going to go on Bozeman, and that'll be his fourth. Ron Powers at the line. He has 11 points tonight. 
That's a matches jersey number. Now make it 12 for Powers. He's talking about post guys. Talk about Martin Webster. Can't leave all Rick and Horn who went to Hampton, Hampton but right? they didn't play each other because Hampton at that time was in the CIAA as opposed to in the NIAC. But in, in fair play, one of the best in the business. Also, big bad Rick Mahorn. Ran into Rick Mahorn in a hotel lobby not too long ago. He's working with the Detroit Pistons. Yes, so. he has. Doing a lot of radio and TV. Has been for several years. There's Brown, left hand. Keyron Brown's first two of the game. A very Pulls Hampton basket. to within four. Three minutes to go. Black. Fouled by Brown. That's a great one-on-one -on -one matchup. Keep this in mind also in your half-court offense. If Presley stays in the game and Childs does to these final few minutes, unless Presley elects to come out and contest that post pass, that long pass at the top of the key, if you get in pressure, you got to remember Childs is there. That's going to be your pressure release. Keyron Brown, for all his defensive prowess, has fouled out of the game. Well, it's going to come down to free throws. Neither team shoots it particularly well, but Morgan State struggles mightily. 59.4% as a team. But something tells you, as long as it's in the hands of number five, Justin Black, things are going to be all right. 23 points now for Black. Make it 24. He's four off his career high. And more importantly, Morgan State up six. Seven games this year, and they'll make it eight, where he scored 20 points or better. Senior, leader, playing with a sense of urgency. Powers pulls the trigger himself. No good. Fight for the loose ball. Goes to Hampton. Another second chance opportunity. Ricardo. Slick dish. Presley can't convert. And he's got a foul on Morgan State. So our SWAT game, Prairie View A&M and Alabama A&M, will be starting at 10 after 9. And it's starting right now on ESPN News. It'll switch back over to ESPNU immediately following the conclusion of this game. Javon Presley battling for the offensive boards. Got fouled, goes to the line for two. And comes up empty on the first. The 2014 college football season starts now with National Signing Day on Wednesday. ESPNU has 11 hours of coverage that will feature reporters at a dozen college campuses, live player announcements, and up-to-the-minute class ranking updates. ESPNU's National Signing Day Wednesday starts early. Get your coffee and donuts at 8 a.m. Eastern. Presley one for two from the line. It's a five-point game, 2.20 to go. Morgan State looking to improve to 6-2 and two in the MEAC. They take on Norfolk State coming up next here in Baltimore. Key doing a nice job trying to deny the ball to Black. And they're going to try to post up on one side of the field with Childs. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Childs. Spins. Comes up empty. Offensive rebound. No good from Hubbard. Here's Hampton. Key slices in. Got fouled. And Breon Key will go to the line. Shot blocked. I believe it was Maxwell. There's the contact. Couldn't tell from that angle was that ball on the glass or not, as we saw Justin Black come in and it. I don't think very so. Very close. I think it's going yeah, up. I think it's going up too, yeah. Breon Key, a 6-2 transfer from Old Dominion. In that melee on the other end of the floor, Mike Nico came up limping, grabbing his left ankle. He's out of the ball game now. Key now, three for three from the free throw line. 
with all the injuries and all the fouls, this really turned into a slugfest, just like you said it would be. Well, yeah, we, we, I thought, and, and the coaches didn't want to really go out on the limb and say that, but they kind of anticipated. They're going to have to play a lot of players. It's going to be a grind them out ball game, value in the basketball, defensive possessions, making your free throws. One possession game. Morgan State three point lead and the ball. A minute and a half to go. Here's Blossom. Trying to clear out the top. Look for cutters. Pretlow found a seed. Left hand no good. Childs couldn't grab it. As we count down to one minute to go, a chance to tie with a three. And Buck Joyner wants to talk it over. Hamptons, two and one in overtime games this year. Morgan is six of those. Man, have, they flipped, the key. have they flipped the script though? Five for 17 in the first half, and they're five for six in the second half. Closing out ball games. That's right. Talked to Todd Bozeman earlier today. He said exactly that. <laughs> NC Central currently up three on UMES with about four minutes to go in that game. Under a minute to go. Powers. Might have had a block from behind by Duncan. It's out of bounds, and it's Morgan State basketball. Good idea by Powers. And the officials have ruled it Morgan State yeah. basketball. So they saw what we saw. Morgan State will have the full length of the court to go with some full pressure defense. One four set. There's your pressure release. Good foul. The foul and Childs will go to the line. Both teams shooting two the rest of the way. Ian Childs has made one solitary free throw tonight. He's one for five as he steps to the line talking a little about this basketball game. He was talking about this intense rivalry that Morgan has. He said that the Morgan-Hampton game gets a lot of play in this area. There's so many Hampton alumni in this area. You talk about the Coppin game. This Morgan-Hampton thing has become really kind of fired up in addition to Morgan's big rival game against Iowa. But special thanks to Leonard for everything he does. Well, they got some good juju at the half because they are 11 for 15 from the free throw line in the second half. Yeah, this becomes a two possession basketball game. Childs goes to the line. If you miss this, try to back tap. But what you got to do if you're, you're Hampton with one timeout left, push it down, get the best shot opportunity. Doesn't have to be a three right now. So you've got a chance. Four point lead. Hampton with the ball. Trailing by four. Shooters in the game on both sides. Powers had a block by Childs. But Javon Presley does bring you shooting two. Javon Presley, he has six points tonight, two for three from the free throw line. Chance to make it a one possession ball game. Conley hits that one. Yeah, that was a nice stroke. Make or miss. You, you almost have to foul, I think, if you're Hampton. Shot clock being off. Can't let more than one lot of time off the clock. Hubbard, another rebound. And as you mentioned, they foul immediately. That one's going to go on Meikle. Trying to stretch this game as long as you possibly can. Again, immediately following the conclusion of this game, whenever that may be, Prairie View A&M and Alabama a and which currently is on ESPN News, they tipped off at 9:10 Eastern time. We'll switch back over to its rightful place on ESPN U. First free throw, no good. It remains back a three-point game. Free throws here. Yeah. Ah. Don't read, don't read. 
touches every part of the rim, but the end result <laughs> is a made free throw for Justin Black, who now has 25, and his team's up four with 20 seconds left. Tampa's got one timeout remaining. And a nice sell job by Darden, and they're going to whistle Justin Black for the foul. But Jordan alertly goes offense for defense. Fourth foul now on Black. And as you said, Darden does a nice job of selling this. Just a little touch. So Darden at the line. He has five points, two for two from the free throw line. And he cans it. Childs checks back in the second footer. Shaq Duncan goes back to the Morgan State sideline. It's a two point game. So now I, I think you try to deny, deny, deny. 13 seconds is the most. The clock can be before the foul. It, it, you know, try to get a steal and the score real quickly. And I, I'm being very gracious in saying 13, maybe even 15. It's got to be quick. Play defense. All right, pick up the foul. And you can't fault no. Matt Joyner and the Hampton Pirates for employing this tactic. No, 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 not at all. This is a Morgan State team that is shooting under 60% from the free throw line for the season. In the first half, they were only 5 for 17. They have, to their credit, really turned things around since about the five and a half minute mark of this game. 7 for 10 are the Bears. Remember what we talked about at the 528? 16 attempts to 10 attempts. They're shooting 70% so far for, for a Morgan, and that may bode well for them, and they've yet to turn the basketball over. Other short arm. Durham. Ever missed the first. He'll go for the second. 13 points. All but one of them. This is big on both sides. Time. That was a big free throw. Yeah, you protect the three-point line if you're Morgan State. And if you're Hampton, if you're quick, you might can get two for one. Oh! They need a three to tie. And no timeout. One timeout. I'm sorry. Here we go. And Coach Joyner uses that final time. This is the situation he loves. Now can they execute? Side out of bounds. Young man inbounding the ball, Lawrence Cooks, is actually percentage-wise their best free their, their best three-point shooter at 48 percent. Hasn't taken that many. But they're going to look for the better shooter, Darden. Oh, Mercado. Mercado, too. Here's Mercado. Top of the key. Tied it up! He tied it up! With 3.5 left! Three and a half seconds left. And now we regroup and realize three and a half seconds is plenty of time to get a decent shot off. Plenty of time. And you've got Childs there. So you throw the ball to him and you send your guys down the sidelines. Real catch, quick catch and shoot. He looks for Black. Bozeman inbounds. Here's Black. He launches. And it comes up empty. In overtime. So these two teams used to playing tight games. <laughs> I told you a few minutes ago. We're being told that there's about seven inches of snow on the ground outside. Why don't we play a couple overtimes? With that snow wash man, through man, here. Well, we got nowhere to go. My guys are going to be upset tomorrow. <laughs> fouls on Hampton. That's on Mercado, who tied this game up with time running out. Now you're in overtime. Overtime. So these two teams used to playing tight games. <laughs> I told you a few minutes ago. being told that there's about seven inches of snow on the ground outside. Why don't we play a couple overtimes? We got snow wash man, through man, here. Well, we got nowhere to go. My guys are going to be upset tomorrow. <laughs> fouls on Hampton. That's on Mercado, who tied this game up with time running out. Now you're in overtime.
So both teams have got to change gears. If you're Hampton, you're excited because you got back in it with a great shot at the end. Settle down, play defense, and you get this cheapy call. If you're Morgan, you remember you fought hard to get back in this basketball game, and you did it fundamentally sound, taking good shots, making free throws. Go back to that, and both teams have got to play better, tougher, smarter, more intense defense. Like free throws from Hubbard, he's hit his last three from the line. So Morgan State up two to start overtime. And that turnover free throw thing still is in effect, too, I'm telling you. There's Mercado. That's the spot where he hit the tire. Off the window, there's Presley. It's a nice job by Presley. Got a low post presence. Didn't put it to the, to the floor, just uses the glass and scores. Timeout called by Morgan State. Justin Blackwell inbounds for Morgan State. Bozeman running the point. on the shot clock. And Blossom got the ball and got the foul. Foul goes on Maxwell. He's been silent in the closing moments. Swack basketball on ESPN News while we finish this one up here in the MIAC. They'll switch over to ESPNU at the conclusion of this one. Blossom knocks down the first free throw. Two free throws by Blossom. Puts the Bears back up two. Traveling call by Deron Powers. That's a nice call, but it was a defensive play. They ran the little high ball screen. And in that pushing and shoving and setting the screen, kind of slowed Presley down. And the anticipation of making the pass a second ago by Powers results in that in that travel. He tried to react, couldn't react quick enough. 14 turnovers for Hampton. Separation if you can for Morgan. Childs double team passes out of it. Blossom foul goes back to the line. That's a very smart play that time by Cedric Blossom. He reads the double team. Childs alertly sees it, feels it, and looks right down the middle of the floor. Watch this here. Watch this angle. There's a double up. Goes right inside. Good catch by Blossom. He goes to the free throw line. You've got to have defensive rotation. Ramon Mercado checks back into the contest. Cedric Blossom a chance to extend the lead. He's hit his last four free throws tonight. Meikle picked up that foul, so he's out with five now. And rattles in and out for Cedric Blossom. Dwight Meikle fouls out with six points on the night. Has some important baskets in the second half. Made a couple plays. Over a sophomore, six eight. Look at this Hampton basketball team, and you talk about Powers, Brown, Darden, Presley, Meikle, all the young kids, Cooks. Oh for two from Blossom. Chance to tie or take the lead for Hampton. Staggered high, we haven't seen that. Rion Key, clear path to the hoop. Nice call that time. Staggered high ball screen, double screen. You let Key, who's a good penetrator, and can dribble the basketball off that, go right to the glass for the score. Three minutes to go in the extra session. 
on the car. And great execution. Anybody can do that. Just set the screen, go opposite. Nice, easy basket that time by Hubbard. 18 points for Hubbard. Mercado. That was like halfway in between a shot and a pass for Mercado. You have to move without the basketball. Watch that cut right there. And there's a layup. Set the little screen. Move without the ball from strong side to weak side. Weak side cut. Bam, score. Both teams executing to their highest round with these final 234. And now Javon Presley has fouled out as well. Not a good foul by Presley. Shaquille Duncan shooting two. Misses the first. 6'9 junior out of Philadelphia. Just a 50% free throw shooter. Javon Presley led this team in scoring their last two games. Only seven points tonight. Now you worry if you're Hampton. You really don't have a lot of size coming off the bench. Uncle Robo goes back into basketball game. Morgan's missed their last four free throw attempts in the extra session. Inside, Okorobo. Quick turnaround, no good. Powers had it blocked, but they're going to call the foul on Hubbard. And early in the game, the story was Hampton's ability to get second chance opportunities, keep the ball alive, go to the free throw line and make a basket. The same thing is happening now in the overtime. Nice look inside to Okorobo. Shot missing. He was very smart. They see he didn't go over the bat. Just kind of tried to reach out. Maybe, maybe could have gotten away with that. But again, Powers comes in from inside, and he'll he'll go to the free throw line. A much better free throw shooter. And even he's gotten bitten by the free throw bug. Jerron Powers, normally an 80 percent, 86 percent free throw shooter, misses the first. Good. One for two from the strike for Powers. Bozeman. The lob. And just a little too high, even for the seven foot two inch Ian Childs. Goes out of bounds. It's going to be Morgan State basketball. 2.08 left in the overtime. Childs struggled all night from the field. That one was challenged. Nice job defensively. Open road, but doesn't foul. Just lays enough body on him. Gets him out of rhythm for the shot. And Hampton. Dominant force at 6-7 for the Pirates of Hampton University. Has 14 points tonight. Eight boards, three blocks. Here's your... Key to this second half with five and a half left to go in the second. Ten for 19 for Morgan State. 16 for 26. Free throws have told this story tonight. Make the free throws. We'd be on the bus right now. Okoroba. Nice look inside. Maxwell. And one. Emmanuel Okoroba has come in tonight and really played a heads-up basketball game. His physical presence on the defensive side, his ability to make a pass, unselfish right there. Sees it, doubles up, nice pass and catch. Maxwell does the rest. Really thread the needle on that one, and that gives Hampton a 77-76 lead. Threw the ball to the outside hand, and then alertly Maxwell grabs the ball with two hands. Devon Maxwell has 16 points, only a 50% free throw shooter coming in. Cedric Blossom fouled out on that subsequent foul. Made him when it counts. 17 for Maxwell, two point lead for Hampton. Morgan State ball, about 45 left. We saw that graphic, remember, very few turnovers out of Morgan. Hubbard hesitated. 
loose ball. We have a foul underneath. And it's going to go on number two, Breon Key. So Key goes out. Mercado comes in for Joyner. The Hampton bench severely depleted with foul issues. That was the 88th free throw attempt of this contest. Ian Childs, who struggled from the field and from the line, connects on the first. Too strong on the second. 78-77, Hampton, the lead on the ball. A minute and a half left. Maxwell. And Devon Maxwell will go to the line. Officials calling an extremely tight game. They've been consistent throughout, including the five minute extra session. Anthony Hubbard is done. And Duncan checks in for him. 18 points, 17 rebounds for number 11, Anthony Hubbard. Season high rebounds for him. Fourth double double. He had a double double at halftime. Too strong. Two point game, a minute 20 to go. Bozeman <laughs> almost lost it. Neither team has a timeout. Possession there will go to the Pirates. Bozeman. <laughs> Rebound, Okaroba. I think if you're Morgan, you, you, you kind of try to play this solid. I don't think you've got a foul right now. Yeah, I saw Todd Bozeman wave off his troops. They looked over for instructions, and he waved them off. They're going to play D. Keep the ball in Powers' hands. As we said, no timeouts. Here's that double high ball screen. Look for the drive. Seven on the shot clock. Okoroba. Childs all over him. And they call the foul on Ian Childs. And Okoroba did a nice job of initiating contact, but there wouldn't have been a foul on Childs had he not come down. If you keep your hands up, watch this. He goes past verticality. Nice job by Okoroba. Initiates contact. But you see how Childs came down? See how he made like the volleyball, the spike move, brought both hands down. And when he does, that's going to be the foul. And now Ian Childs is done for the night. We're going to end up with 100 collective free throws by the time this game's over. And we need to see if we can get a uniform from somebody because we may have to go out there and play. Okoroba 6 for 13, make it 6 for 14 from the free throw line. Eight points. And he misses them both. No timeouts. 20 seconds left. Bozeman. Offensive rebound. 12 seconds. Left. And they're going to get Darden for the foul. And who else would you rather have at the line if you're Todd Bozeman than number five, Justin Black? No timeouts. You look for something good. That's a nice look for a three-point shooter. He made 28 of them, but an excellent rebound and second chance opportunity. And then you drive and you get the contact, but you keep that alive. Rashane Simpson, big-time rebound. And here comes Justin Black. Justin Black has 25 points. 
before that, he had made six of his last seven free throws. He's eight for 12 for the game. Both of these guys, Todd Bozeman and Buck Joy Jr., have done a great job coaching their basketball teams. Never say die attitude. He goes one for two to make it a one-point game. 79-78 Hampton. Ten seconds left. Black wasn't sure if he should foul right away. To the line. Buck Joyner telling his team, make sure you use your head. Darden, a 78% free throw shooter. Plenty of time. The 6'2 sophomore from Hampton is the best shooter on this Pirates team. He makes it there. Two point game, no timeouts. Five seconds. Oh! And they're going to call Okorova for the foul, and that's going to send Dante Pretlo to the line with a chance to tie it with 3.2 seconds left. Pretlo, 70% free throw shooter. Let's see. Does Okorova get out of the way? There's a little screen right there. The reach. That knee, the left knee, the little reach there. Here we go again. Take a look. Yep, see that? It's, it's, it's a nickel dimer, as they say, but yes, he touched it. You know what? The officiating crew, I said it before, and I'll bears repeat it. They have been consistent yes, throughout with their calls. Might not like it, but that's what they've called, and they did it from the beginning to the possible end. Pretlo at the line, Bingo shooting two. Bingo place now. Makes the first. No timeouts left, Stan. What is Buck Joyner going to do if he makes this free throw? Get the ball in. And, and re alertly, the coaching staff told Coach, Coach, we don't have any timeouts. He was jumping up. Timeout, timeout. Daryl Sharp, Marco Johnson, Keem McShee said, hey, 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 no timeouts, Coach. That low to tie. Darden, it goes if it's off the mark. Personnel becomes a real issue here. No question about it. Giles has fouled. has fouled out. Hubbard has fouled out. Blossom has fouled out. Those are four of the five Morgan State starters. Morgan State starts with the ball. Three or four players out there with four fouls. So every time the whistle blows, somebody's holding their breath. There's Pretlo. Bozeman, in and out. Mercado, the rebound for the Pirates. Devon Maxwell only has three fouls. I want him to touch the ball in every possession. Maxwell had it, gave it up. Down low, Adams, no good. Scramble for the loose ball. Duke Getzel says, Morgan State basketball. Four of their five starters out for Todd Bozeman. His son and Shaq Duncan both with four fouls. Be smart. Test your passes. Continue to attack. Three-pointer blocked by Maxwell. Here's Darden. 
Darden could be a key in this double overtime. Best shooter on the floor. I think Darden can definitely be a key along with Powers, but I want the ball to go in the hands of the big guy, Maxwell. Um, you know, Deontay Adams. Adams doesn't get a lot of moments on the court. You can watch this here. Just watch, continues. Just keeps moving, moving, moving. Easy call. At nine points during the season, he's Kenny of Pat. <laughs> Opportunity to, to kind of etch your name into the, the record books and the hearts of one of your respective schools. Hampton, great history there. Morgan State, great history. Have you ever been part of a double yes, overtime game? Yes, indeed. As a player? Yes, indeed. As a player, yes, I think I lost as a coach. Not as a head coach, as an assistant coach. We have four overtime game uh, NC State Wake Forest. In fact, you can see their own classic in there. They count the bucket. Torrin Childs Harris. Spread the floor. We've seen this set many times, but we haven't called this name. Torrin Childs Harris. Drives, contact, scores, gives the Bears the lead. How Seldom about that for the young guard. man? Yes. Out of New London, Connecticut. First game for the Bears, just became eligible. And his three-point play puts him up three in double OT. And now Lawrence Cooks will check back in for Hampton. Another good shooter for Buck Joyner's club. As Maxwell goes to the line. Devon Maxwell now has 19 points. And even 20 for Devon Maxwell. It's a one-point game with 2.50 to go in double OT. Years ago, I called a triple overtime game. Put it out. Good defense on the other end. And it's going to be a turnover. It'll be Hampton basketball. By my count, and I got a lot of squeaky lines right there on X side, but I think that's his seventh block of the night. Seventh block for the Pirates. And a foul away from the ball. Well, back at the line. First one will tie it. And he does. Really loose rims, aren't they? Very forgiving. We've seen that a lot tonight. Balls are going in and out, bounced up high, going in. What a trip to the Charm City it's been this year for the Hampton Pirates. They win in overtime at Coppin the other night, and now they're in double overtime against Morgan. We have now pushed past the 10 o'clock hour in MEAC basketball. Stan Luter, Rich Hollenberg. This one has been a dandy. We're still standing. <laughs> Bozeman. In the paint. Offensive foul. That's the second consecutive outstanding defensive possession for the Hampton Pirates. Kyle Thomas, the offense has never got any type of rhythm that time. 
Ball goes side and watch him take off above the circle. Yeah, that's an easy call there, too. And things are starting to get extra tense. I just witnessed Fretlow and Darden going chest to chest on their way down the floor. Maxwell blocked by Duncan. Fretlow up ahead. Childs gets it in. In the OT, free throws were the key. Hampton had the ball with time running out. Darden's heave, no good. And that brings us to double overtime. We're under a minute and a half to go. Hampton could take the lead with a triple. Cooks at it, knocked away. Bozeman lost it. And Blake Bozeman, lucky that he got fouled and will go to the line. Because that looked like a Morgan State turnover waiting to happen. And guess who made the steal? Torrin Childs Harris. <laughs> Bozeman, just his first free throw attempt of the night, and it's money. A minute 13, Morgan State, three point lead. Bozeman can make it four. Buries it. Try to get the ball to Maxwell. Maxwell powers on the drive. I like to go inside. One minute left. There's Powers on the drive. It falls off. And Deron Powers goes to the free throw line. I, I think you have a better chance of getting oh, contact, man. getting a three-point play the old-fashioned way of clock stoppage by driving. Yeah, you've got Darden, who's a great three-point shooter. You are down two possessions. But for this possession, I'm not upset. He didn't have the ball. Stepped away from the free throw line. Adams did, but Powers had not received the basketball yet. Deron Powers has been aggressive taking the ball to the hole all night. He's five for eight from the free throw line. Came in an 86% free throw shooter. And that one's clutch. 56.3 remaining in double overtime. Made it look easy. Two point game. And Hampton's going to play deep. Here's Fretlow. You can almost play this straight. Now, clock at 13. I don't know if you want to foul me if you Hampton, but you don't want to give up the drive. Contest every shot, though. Seven on the shot clock. They wave off the shot with Hampton called timeout. 20 seconds left. What do you do if you're Buck Joyner? Score as quickly as you can. You don't have any timeouts. Neither team has a timeout. Possession arrow goes to the Pirates. Of and so you talk about quickly, that's yeah. quick. There it is. 23 for Maxwell. They, start, they, they scored so quick, the clock didn't start. So now the officials are going to have to check that. There's 20.3. Now they... It was 18.3. And so they had three attempts on to it. Gotta get this in. Man. And they foul right away. The foul is going to be on Mercado. And Kyle Thomas, another freshman. See Coach Joyner and the staff, and I think they wanted Mercado to D him up a little more before that quick foul. 
Because you've got guys now going to the free throw line that not only have not been in this position, but haven't really shot the basketball too often. I don't tonight. want to make it any more dramatic than it needs to be, but Kyle Thomas was berated at shoot-around today. Coach Bozeman said to him, this is the time for you to show me you want to be a player on this team. And he makes the free throw. But no fouls here. He can ice this thing if he makes this one. How about the freshman stepping in in emergency duty? Morgan stayed up five. The heave no good. Maxwell follows. Not over yet. 92 89. 7.8 seconds left. Hampton will look to foul right away. They get it to Thomas. He'll go back to the line. They make it 7.1. And as you can imagine, every tick on that clock is precious right now. Thomas. Good. In a game where it looked like free throws would spell doom for Morgan State in the first half, they have saved them in the second half and in the overtime sessions. With three seconds, oh. the triple is good. It's a one-point game. We're pretty sharp on my tips and seconds tonight, you know? Ninety-three, ninety-two. Morgan State, a one-point lead. Duncan, fifty percent. This is the first. So this is questionable. Do you miss this? No one's at the free throw line. That's going to give Hampton a chance to get a, a catch and a heave. Odds on in their favor. I, I try to make it. I, I, I want to make it. And you see Blake Bozeman was just instructing the freshman Kyle Thomas, don't foul. She put somebody on the inbounds pass. Last chance for Hampton. There you go. Knocked out of bounds by Childs Harris. Still time enough to get a catch and shoot. Point nine seconds. There is time for one last shot for Hampton. Down two. Double overtime. Cooks to inbounds. Here's the lob in the middle. Maxwell. It's over. And they storm the court at Hillfield House.